services you provide. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Can you do me a favor? Can you, nice and loud, look into the camera and say, you're watching the Working Lunch Show. One. I'll count to three and we'll all do it together. You're watching the Working Lunch Show. Ready? One, two, three. You're watching the Working Lunch Can you do it by yourself now? <laughs> okay, we're we're Welcome back. back. That was our friends over at the the, the end of that was over at the Rainbow Child Development Center. I always get a kick out of listening to those those young kids. Better than listening to them than than my voice for the full hour, right? <laughs> So we did want to. Uh, so great to talk with with Sandra and John about yep. about uh, happenings in their work at the at the job center and the upcoming fair at DCU. So we do have uh, an email that came in that we wanted to kind of highlight. So John, why don't you take it away with that? Yeah, sifting through all the emails this month, we we found one that was on uh, about how to prepare for a job field a uh, job fair. So Sue in Worcester writes, "I'm looking to attend a job fair at the DCU center. Uh, can you give me some advice on how to prepare?" So I talked pretty, to a pretty pretty straightforward question. Sue was right to the point. So, <laughs> so I talked to the um, the career specialist upstairs, uh, Roy Lucas and Anna Tunes, and um, asked them about you know what mm-hmm. what kind of things you would do at a job fair and what kind of things you might not want to do at the job okay. fair. Okay. So they they helped me compile a list of do's and don'ts. So very helpful tips you might say if you're going I to a job fair, not only the one at the DCU but just in general. Yeah, I mean some of these might kind of come off as as obvious but well, they're obvious maybe to, to people that have been to a job there before right right sure uh so do's prepare a 30 to 60 second elevator speech or a commercial about yourself so they actually broke this down and i thought this was really helpful they talked about yeah. five seconds on your personal info five seconds on why you're here you're here for an opportunity with this company uh, five five seconds on your experience, your work history, your accolades, uh, awards, um, any relevant experience. Um, five five minutes on your accomplishments. Five minutes? Or... I'm sorry, five seconds on your okay, accomplishments. I'm listening. And then 10 seconds on your knowledge of their company. So kind of like, hi, I'm Jeff Turgeon. Uh, I'm a job seeker. I'm really interested in, in working in such such a field. And then go into a bit, and talk about, a bit about yourself. And yep. So I guess part of it is brevity. You don't want to be talking for five minutes. Right. You You're want not going to have that much right. time. Exactly. And that was actually one of the other don'ts is don't monopolize their time. You know, make make a connection and then kind of go on your way. Because there are other job seekers there and there are other employers that you probably want to talk to. Sure. And you and probably the follow up would be, Hey, let me let me get your card or let me see if I can if, if there if there is uh, more things you want to talk about, obviously there would be, you know, so if you can follow up with that conversation after the fact then I'm sure there'd be that they would, um, you know, kind of advise you if there's an online application process. Some other, some other do's that you might want to. Actually, so, I wanted to go to a don't. I was gonna go. I was gonna go back and forth. Oh, you're really mixing it up. You're mixing it up. Bob, yeah. what do you think of that? Is that okay if we go to a, from a, from a production standpoint? We're okay with that. Do we yeah, do we're definitely okay. You'll allow with that. that. Okay. Do a don't. It's, so don't do's. Stuff. Don't just drop your resume and walk off. They call this in the industry the drop and walk. <laughs> you don't want to do that. They, they, they call it that, do they? I've heard that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you kind of want to you want to talk to the employer. You want to you want to hand in their resume and, and give your elevator speech. Make that connection, like you said, kind of kind of get yeah. to the point where you can get a, a card or some sort of contact information mm-hmm. to follow up. Make with. a connection, a personal connection, if you could. Yep. No uh, drop and walk. Do have questions prepared for the recruiter. So not just hey, what does your company do? You know, you want to be more yeah. more specific. Do a little research beforehand. Prepare for. Did the they job give you there. any examples of questions that would be relevant? Or, or a good example? Uh, I didn't, but I'm sure we could brainstorm as a, as a group here and go for some, right? <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot with that one. But, but so in other words, you wouldn't be like, oh, hey, what's your company do? Exactly. You, you, you would you be like, oh, I saw, you, I saw you, you, I saw you're, you're involved in a uh, chemical manufacturer. You know, do, do you have a, you know, maybe a question about quality control or something? Right, that, right. Something do a little bit more research and, and, and. Would appropriate question be like, how much vacation time do you give? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that brings me to another don't. Don't talk about vacation time, oh, um, benefits. salary, benefits. That's that's really after an interview, after you're offered a job. That was when you want to discuss that yeah. kind of thing. Um, don't bring anyone with you who isn't looking for a job. I know this is is one that we see a lot in our youth job mm-hmm. fairs. Is a kid will show up with a bunch of his friends. The friends aren't looking for a job, and it's distracting. I think employers see that as a as It also a bad shows, time. yeah, that you, you maybe lack independence. Right, right. So you yeah. you know, you want to go um, by yourself. 
So even for the adult side too, you shouldn't have someone kind of hanging around you in the back, in the you know side of you or the back of you, just kind of standing there lurking. That might be a little you... weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, lurking in the shadows. Like, you're saying it as if I'm I'm like I was stalking like... someone. No, I'm just saying in general, it would be it would be kind of kind of odd, right? To have someone over your shoulder just standing there while you're trying to make a personal connection. Have them kind of go to another booth or yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, do dress professionally. Sure. I think that is, is, is key. Is there any danger of overdressing, do you think? Uh, I would say a tuxedo probably wouldn't would be, be the, wouldn't the be place. Wouldn't be overdressing. Um, but a suit, you know, you know uh, women, business casual, yeah. which wouldn't be a tuxedo t-shirt, which I know. No, I think there's there's um, a term, too. If, if someone does try to dress in a way that brings maybe over attention to themselves like you wouldn't want to st- like some people i know some people are like oh I, I want to stand out in the crowd so i'm gonna wear like a very bright almost like peacocking is that i think that's the where term. yeah that? yeah i've heard that before <laughs> you, you, you know you want to be you want to you want to show that you would fit in that organization right yep and not and not so you're not there to get a te- negative attention it's not attention at all costs it's 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 really just kind of you should probably be a bit understated but very professional at the same time so, Absolutely. So for women, that might mean, you know, a, a business, uh, a suit, pantsuit, skirt suit, something on that one, but not like, you know, provocatively dressing or or, or going like dancing like you're going out dancing. Uh, for men, it, it would mean kind of similar. You you know, like you said, not a tux, but but maybe a sport coat and, and slacks or a business suit would always be, I, I imagine, in you know something. something Probably different. wouldn't want to wear a cape or pajama pants. <laughs> I like your thinking on this. A cape. Gotta think outside the box. Pants would be would be don'ts. If somebody doesn't say no, I'm, I'm gonna write do those it. down. No cape or pajama pants. Um, and then let's see. Another don't um, is to not go in with uh, don't go in with unrealistic expectations. So you shouldn't okay. go. Oh, I'm gonna go to this job fair and I'm gonna have a job by the time I go home. That I think would be an unrealistic expectation. But if you go with with um, the expectation that you'll meet some employers, maybe get some business cards, find out about some organizations, make a good connection, make a good connection, yeah. that would be. So there's a fine line. I mean, between positive thinking and having confidence and having um, you know that mindset of hey, things are gonna be, things are gonna turn out good. If I if I go to this event, I want to be successful with kind of unrealistic expectations and feeling kind of let down or or maybe pressing at that point of connection to to be like instead of just kind of making a connection you're trying too hard to to get a job offer write that in there right yeah and um the last do that i have here i think is is probably one of the most important it's kind of overarching treat the job fair like an interview like your initial interview Mm -hmm. you know and that that kind of encompasses Dressing appropriately, a firm handshake, um, eye contact, a strong voice. Uh, so that's a good way to look at it. You, yeah. you know, you, it it's of, your first impression. Right? Exactly. So, so you only get one. All those... right? <laughs> yeah, it's true. Thank you for that. Uh, that's a very helpful list, and then, I appreciate uh, the folks at the at the job center for for helping us put that together. Bob, anything you want to add? Anything from your? Uh... We should thank Sue too, don't you? We should thank Sue for the email. Oh, and Sue for the email. So yes, thank, thank you Sue very much for, for that email. And if people uh, would like to send any sort of <clears throat> questions or comments, they can email us at workinglunch at wcuw dot org. Working we... lunch, one word. Working one word. lunch at wcuw dot org. Great. Excellent. Great. Well, you know, there's. I mentioned before, it is a busy month coming up. Um, we did have. Another event that uh, that's coming up in the community that uh, the, the Central Mass Workforce Investment Board uh, and the Jobs Workforce Central Job Center will be a part of uh, with other community leaders, and that's a it's a two day seminar on undoing racism. And obviously, we have a very diverse population in our in our uh, region and in the community here, and we want to make sure that uh, you know everyone is that that we're understanding the different dynamics that may exist within our community within the social context that we. That we operate, so uh, I'm excited about uh, attending that sermon. We actually have uh, an interview with Derek Brindisi from the Department of Public Health, who's helping to sponsor that. So at this point, Bob, are we ready to go to that interview? So, Hi, we're here with Derek Brindisi, the Director of Public Health for City of Worcester. Welcome to the show. Thanks for, thanks for being on the Working Lunch. Sure, thanks for having us. You're part of the Worcester Partnership for Racial and Ethnic Health Equity. And uh, you're, you're sponsoring uh, an event coming up, a two-day uh, seminar on undoing racism. Can you tell us a little bit about that? About that uh... 
Workshop. Sure. So the partnership for health equity has been in existence in the city now since 2007. And it's a group that comes together and we try to focus collaboratively with key stakeholders and residents in, in the city to focus on on those, those issues of disparities and racial and ethnic health disparities in particular. One focus of this is that we know that race plays probably the most critical factor in people's health outcomes. And so with limited dollars provided by the State Department of Public Health, uh, we have been able to bring a group out of New Orleans, the People's Institute of Survival and Beyond, to Worcester, this is the third year running, um, to hold a two-day training and it's focused on race. So after this year's training, we expect to have a cohort of 150 individuals and organizations that have gone through this type of training. Yeah, and having, and having heard from some of the past participants, they've just raved about the, you know, about the training and about the, um, the, the way it gave them a fresh perspective on this issue and really kind of help open their eyes about, about uh, you know, how they go about doing their business. So uh, you know, it sounds like a, a really exciting event. Is there still space available? It's happening March 14th and 15th, and it's hosted by the Mass College of Pharmacy. Is that the location, I believe? That's right. So it's a two-day event. It'll be at the ninth floor of the Mass College of Pharmacy. They've been um, very generous in offering this space for those two days, and we appreciate that. Um, but these are two all-day events. Um, any participant, we would ask that you set aside the two full days because they build on each other. So sure. if you don't attend the first day, you don't understand what's happening on the second day. And if you don't go the second day, then you, then you don't get the full grasp of what they were trying to build upon on day one. Sure, and, and the Workforce Board and, and our uh, Job Center, uh, Workforce Center, will be sending a team of, of staff and volunteers, uh, and we're excited about uh, you know, understanding the issues better. Certainly, we serve a very diverse population, uh, both here in the city as well as in the region, and so uh, having this experience, I think, is going to help us be uh, a, a better integrated in the services we deliver. So. So we're excited about it. And is there still space available? Do you know? Um, we're asking. Um, right now, we're getting close to the mark. We can only hold 30 to 35 participants um, during this training. And uh, we're asking all uh, potential participants to reach out to Common Pathways at commonpathways at gmail.com and try to RSVP before okay. the space is full. So that's commonpathways at gmail.com to find out if there's any space available. So again, we want to thank you for being here and telling us about all the exciting you. stuff Appreciate you have it. going on and about this, uh, this exciting seminar. This is WCUW Worcester 91.3 FM, community radio serving central Massachusetts. And as a community radio station, we depend on our membership and our listeners, as well as underwriters who support WCUW. And just to let you know that our spring membership drive will be taking place from March 8th through Sunday, March 17th. So we hope you can participate in that. And I'll turn it back over to Jeff and Sean. Well, thank you, Bob. I Thanks, appreciate Bob. that. It's a uh, membership drive, obviously, uh, very important here to uh, WCUW. And uh, proud to, uh, to participate myself in that. So um, we did want to take a couple minutes to talk about some current news. Obviously, right now, dominating the headlines uh, nationally is the federal budget uh, talks around the sequestration. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, we quite frankly don't know what's going to happen with that. Um, uh, we're not, you know, kind of privy to the ins and outs of that discussion. So hopefully they'll be able to, uh, to make some informed and, and wise choices with that. But, but maybe some other topics that are a bit closer to home or a bit more uh, in line with um, things that, uh, that we work with on a daily basis. Um, I should mention with the sequestration, though, it will impact local services here offered through... Right. Workforce Central, our uh, some of our youth uh, workforce development programs, um, but some other things that are happening in the news, Sean, what you? Yeah, uh, I know unemployment's kind of been something that we've been talking about. We kind of touch upon it every show, just yep. a little bit. Um, and I, I saw an article in the Telegram Gazette earlier this week about uh, unemployment. Mm -hmm. And it was saying that here locally in Worcester, back in April and May, our unemployment rate was around 6.4. And towards the end of the year, in January, it's actually risen to 7.2. Mm -hmm. So it's um, going back up. So, I mean, as, as far as you look at that article, you'd think that that's a bad thing, um, that, that, you know, there aren't any jobs out there. But in reading the article, they actually talk about how when the employment rate went down to 6.4, uh, it actually got a lot of job seekers enthusiastic, and a lot of new job seekers had entered the market. So it shows 
it's not a good thing, but it's not a bad thing. It's it's almost kind of not as bad as it may sound. Going from six point four to seven point two, yeah. you would think, oh boy, a lot of people yeah, get laid what's off. What's happening? You know. Yeah, I, I do think I do think that that the economy is in a bit of a stall right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you said, there are some more because there were some some bright spots earlier on. More people have that had had kind of gone out of uh, the job market, if you will. Uh, are coming back in. Some of those people coming back in too are um, older workers, senior workers, yep. and some of them are people that are that um, you know basically had retired and now coming back in. Yeah. And so if they're if they're job searching, they're getting now counted again back in the unemployment uh, numbers. But also uh, a lot of those older workers are finding jobs, and you know kind of a um, unintended negative consequence from that is while that while that on the on the surface seems like a good thing they have more money in their pockets they're you know being able to uh to stay financially secure one of the things that the, that we're seeing them i'm looking at a um have a uh story here from the daily mail online and that's a uk cub- publication in britain they're tracking this and it, and it tracks very similar to here in the states about the fact that our a lot of the new employment that's happening, new hires, are actually older workers. Uh, and that, um, you know, the, the problem with that or the downside of that, if, if you will, is that those that are coming out of college are having a very difficult time landing employment. Yep. Uh, and, in fact, we've talked a lot about youth employment as being such an important factor for young people to get you know those success skills it's, they it's need. It's where you really, really get those kind of skills. It's where you. Yeah, really hands on learning, right? Them. Yeah, and, exactly. And so, you know what what's happening is, um, you know, those older older retirees <laughs> or older workers are coming back in. They're taking, you know, they're they're, um, getting those jobs, and getting squeezed out out of those younger workers. Those traditional youth jobs are now turning into youth jobs, and also, you know, I think we're we're seeing too. There's a bit of of, um, you know, lag in in those college sector you know college graduate jobs so i know you you were part of an event up uh with our colleagues in north central up yeah. in up in the lemonster area that uh paul harrington